Thanks for staying with us here on Sports Live. And we move on now to women's and Olympic football. And Banyana Banyana have a massive task ahead of them to ensure qualification for the Paris Olympic Games later this year. That's after their 1-0 defeat to Nigeria in Abuja in the first leg of the final round of qualification last night. And they will need um, a better performance here at home on Tuesday at Loftus to go to the Olympics, having missed out of the previous Olympics. And to recap on the events from yesterday, and also I head to the second leg on Tuesday. We are joined by Center Circle founder and editor, a man who's been very passionate about women's football over the past few years, Matsumula Murake. Thanks for being here on the show tonight. Always a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you. How do you look back at this result? 1-0, but away goal doesn't count in the Olympic qualifier. How do they take it? You know, it's... Uh it's always, uh, it was always going to be a tough match without a shadow of doubt. I mean, if you look at the two teams, mm. that's number one playing against uh, number two, South Af uh, Nigeria number one, uh, South Africa number two. So it was always going to be tough. And uh, South Africa go went there very early uh, to try and acclimatize because I'm told that yes. it's about 40 degrees uh, thereabouts. So they tried that. And um, if you look at uh, the result itself, uh, the, the, the way they considered the goal. Mm -hmm. A clumsy challenge by Nukumatlo on a, a Nigerian uh, off, off, off and, off, uh, f uh, forward. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it clearly shows that um, the match was almost evenly poised, but now Nigeria has the advantage. It means going to Loftus on Tuesday night, uh, both teams have to come out because Nigeria also cannot, cannot afford to sit back yeah. and uh, really, of course it's just one goal. And South Africa is playing at home and I heard that uh, the grass was uh, high. That's why South Africa took long to actually get mm -hmm. into the game. The first half, they just didn't play. Mm. Uh, they only come out, came out in the second, uh, in the second half, and uh, that's where they had uh, most of their chances. But unfortunately, it did not happen. But uh, Tuesday, Loftus is going to be a, a very difficult match again uh, for the two teams. Okay, well, the only goal for Nigeria coming via the penalty spot just before half time. There, do you think the players and the coaching staff are disappointed because they were talking? A big game before this and it's because they've beaten Nigeria in the past, they've got the better of them at Wafcon, they've got the better of them at the Buhari Cup or should they be looking at the bigger picture that there's still a second leg here? Look, it's disappointing. They wanted to go, uh, go mm -hmm. there, get a positive result and a positive result would have been a draw mm -hmm. or a win. Unfortunately, they didn't get either. So, which means that uh, uh, both sets of teams but now focusing on South Africa, they're very disappointed with what uh, transpired in uh, Nigeria. Now, coming to Loftus, obviously, that's where the big one is. That's mm -hmm. where now, because uh, this match has been uh, uh, built as uh, the clash of the titans yeah. uh, uh, some have called it the final before the final mm -hmm. uh, so uh, it didn't really live up to expectations because of uh the weather conditions but coming to loftus with uh, those uh, the, that lush uh, green uh, field i think it's going to be a great game uh, both uh, teams as i said earlier they've got wonderful players mm -hmm. i mean south africa's got fifi they've got tembi they've got uh, uh, jermaine yeah. they've got hilda and that side they still have uh, rashishat uh, uh, they've got uh, asisat or shawala they've got uh, tony payne so those are magnificent players and on their day it can be a very uh, magnificent spe uh, spectacle but if you remember Nigeria last was in the Olympics in 2008 that's mm -hmm. in Beijing South Africa missed out in Tokyo yeah. but also there's also that matter that uh, this is a personal one for coach uh, mm -hmm. uh, Desiree Ellis yeah. she has won every or rather she's played a part in everything the World Cup the Kwasafa uh, Wafcon they've won the Wafcon the only thing she hasn't done mm -hmm is to qualify the team for the Olympics. She was in Rio in 2016, but as an assistant to Vera Pau. Mm -hmm. So it clearly shows that uh, this one is also personal for her. But also, if you look at the team that's currently in camp right now, mm -hmm. only seven of them have been to uh, the Olympic Games. So the bulk of the team doesn't know, does, do not have uh, the uh, Olympic uh, spirit, ex uh -huh. Olympic experience. So it's, uh, it, it, it's going to be a, a, a crucial game yeah. for South Africa to win. So that should uh, Coach Desri uh, retire, because we know that uh, she's at the end of of a uh, contract after the uh, Olympics, mm. then she lives on a high. Mm. But it's going to be a very tough one again, uh, as I said. Okay, game of consequence, yeah, for coach Desiree Ellis. But let's hear from uh, the team and some of the players as well as the coach after last night's match. The good thing is it's not a tournament, you know. We've played one game, now we need the, the other game. We know after the game in Pretoria, whoever wins goes through. There's no fixing, there's no anything. But I think after today, uh, they are one zero up with advantage. Uh, there's no uh, away goal rule or whatever. So I also think that gives us so much confidence. So because we're not chasing the game, we know that we just have to win with a better score. It will be interesting in terms of how they approach the game from a tactical point. You know, do you go higher up 
and risk to defend the bigger spaces in behind, you know, or do you sit in a medium block and maybe to have greater possibilities to attack the space behind if Nigeria also, depending on their organization line and the line of confrontation. So tactically it will be very interesting how we approach that game, but I've got no doubt uh, in terms of the technical team, the, the analysis that they will do, uh, the players, the application. That is actually our very own yet the SABC's Nessie Pomali, also a Banyana Banyana analyst having been with the team to the World Cup when they made it through to the last 16, telling us about what kind of a game he is expecting. What kind of a game then are you expecting at Loftus? Look, uh, Nigeria cannot afford to defend because defending for 90 minutes is very difficult, especially uh, against a team of uh, speedy forwards like uh, Tembi, mm. as I mentioned earlier. Tembi, uh, Hilda Jermaine, uh, you know. Mm. Uh, there's also uh, Lebo that can also play as a, as, a, as, a, as, a, as, a wing, as a winger. So if Nigeria sits back, it's going to be to their detriment. But also at the same time, they cannot open up. Uh, South Africa needs to actually chase the game mm -hmm. because we are one nil down uh, as, as we speak. So it's going to be a very in, uh, interesting one because I can tell you now that Nigeria is as scared as South Africa mm. about this game mm. because uh, uh, watching uh, or rather reading uh, some comments uh, on social media, uh, the Nigerian journalists were saying this is not a done deal. Mm. Anything can happen at Loftus and I believe anything can happen. And I believe with uh, the crowd uh, behind uh, Banyana Banyana, who knows, uh, we could be going to uh, Paris uh, in uh, uh, June or uh, July, August. But what happens if we don't go there for the second successive Olympic Games? And you've already said that the coach is in her last tenure of a contract here. Is it considered a failure because this is a team that is African champions? They've reached the last 16 of the World Cup. I wouldn't say. Coach, uh, coach Desiree Ellis has been uh, with Banyana Banyana since 2016 after the departure of uh, Vera Pau, immediately after uh, the 2016 uh, Olympic Games. So uh, for me, it would be perhaps uh, the right moment for her to say, listen, give this to someone else, not because of the results, mm -hmm. but because, I mean, she's been there for as long as we can remember. So maybe, just maybe, it's a chance for someone to come and refresh in the squad, uh, because you're also looking at uh, uh, the next World Cup, you're yeah. also looking at uh, the next Olympics, if we don't qualify. So you need someone that will take that team, mm -hmm. and uh, with the, the young stars, I mean, you've got uh, your Nicole, uh, Michael, you've got uh, uh, the Shamasi twins, the yeah. Tassasi twins, all the young stars but they need someone to groom them towards the next Olympics. So for me, I would, uh, if I were her advisor, I would say Coach uh, uh, Desiree Ellis, just give it up. You've done everything you can for Banyana Banyana. It's just that uh, uh, blip on uh, your CV of not qualifying for the Olympics, but you've done very well for, for, for the national team. You've covered women football extensively, Matlomola Moraki, through Centre Cycle over the past few years. You've spoke about fans at Loftus. I was at Loftus last night. It was almost a full house for sundowns. How do we replicate that for Banyana on Tuesday? How do we get the fans to go there and give them that extra push? You see, it's a bit uh, difficult because uh, you're playing, uh, it's Banyana, and uh, uh, women's football, unfortunately, in South Africa, it's not as supported as it's supposed to be. Mm. Because Banyana Banyana actually, uh, the best performing yeah. uh, national team in this country. So I'm very worried and surprised that uh, people are not coming out to support uh, the national team. But uh, for this one, party, for this particular one, and I saw uh, the union, uh, uh, players union. Okay. Uh, yeah, they've been, they've been pushing people and I saw Sasol, uh, the sponsors of Banyana Banyana, they've mm. also uh, come up with a campaign to say, let's fill up uh, Loftus first fill. So mm. I'm hoping that people will come out in numbers to actually give uh, that uh, extra boost to Banyana Banyana. Coach uh, Desiree Ellis was saying, you know, if the chips are down and the and the fans are there mm. singing or uh, chanting players' names. It can lift the spirit. So I'm just hoping that uh, the fans come out in numbers because this is the big one and perhaps the last one for many. I mean, players like Noku. Noku, yeah. Yeah, they said that uh, after the Olympics, uh, uh, that's it for them. I mean, we've seen uh, Janine has uh, left mm. the scene and now there's Noku. There's uh, uh, Tembi, uh, or rather... Um, uh, uh, the captain, uh, Rafila Jali, those, those are just at the end of uh, their career. But also there's another interesting thing. Mm. Lewohang Ramalep, yeah. she's on 99 caps. Oh, when yeah. she plays uh, on Tuesday, she'll be on 100, joining a list, an elite list of uh, players that will be uh, re uh, making their century of appearances for Banyana Banyana, which is uh, another great thing. But I hope it happens and Banyana Banyana wins, not just uh, a personal glory for her, but for the entire yeah. team. The other big talking point has been taking the game to Loftus. 
what is the thinking there? Because some people are suggesting that maybe because, like you're saying, Banyana doesn't pull a big crowd, they can take them to a smaller stadium and it will be a nice vibe. Is there a reason why they've gone to Loftus? Speaking to Safa and uh, to the coach, they said that it's because of uh, the altitude. They would have uh, loved to go to Ellis Park, mm -hmm. but uh, because uh, if you look at Ellis Park, the surrounding areas, there are many foreign nationals. So maybe, just maybe, uh, there, there would be more <laughs> visiting <laughs> fans than there would be uh, local fans. Yeah. So taking it to Loftus would perhaps uh, help uh, Banyana Banyana to bring in all those uh, uh, supporters that will uh, come in uh, and help them just uh, uh, that for that extra push. But I'm just hoping, as I said, what we saw at uh, Loftus yesterday okay, uh, for Mamelodi Sundowns, mm. uh, I hope we'll see for Banyana Banyana because, uh, as I said I, once again, Banyana Banyana is one of the best performing, if not the best performing national team in the country. So I just hope uh, people come out in numbers and ensure that we get this uh, last ticket to uh, the Olympics. Yeah, and this team, team in this group has done fantastically well, winning WAFCON, also making it through to the last 16 of the World Cup. And they just need to put the cherry on top there by qualifying for the Olympic Games. And we do believe that they can uh, do that. So Tuesday night at Loftus, if you can make it, you can catch the game on SABC Sport. Thank you to Center Circle founder and editor, Maklomola Murake, here joining us on Sports Live.